What's up boys, my name is Brian and today we're talking about Gigabyte's A5X1 which is a stronger and angrier big brother of A5K1 which I have tested just about a week ago. Pretty much everything about these two laptops is exactly the same except three very important details. GPU, processor and price. So we're gonna focus on these three aspects plus we will compare their gaming performance and briefly look through the other features which are identical to A5K1. Now, I'd say that the biggest improvement over A5K1 is a more advanced graphics card. This bad boy packs a 140 watts NVIDIA RTX 3070 under the hood, rocking 8 gigabytes of video memory on board. As you all know, GPU is the main piece of hardware which is responsible for high frame rates and smooth experience in games, and this thing totally nails it. Combined with an 8-core AMD Ryzen 9 processor is still pretty fast DDR4 type RAM and a 3rd generation solid state drive, literally any game is a piece of cake for this laptop. And you're not only getting high frame rates on paper, but you can actually feel and see it even without an external gaming monitor, because its native screen is really good, featuring 240Hz refresh rate, fast response time, good color accuracy and high level of brightness. Now, comparing the results of the gaming test of these two laptops, we can see that A5K1 shows about 15% higher numbers. And now, the main question of the video is, is it worth it to overpay for a laptop with RTX 3070 or is 3060 enough for gaming, VR and live streaming? I mean, of course, an improved CPU is a big deal too, but you'll only feel it while working on heavy projects like 3D design, rendering, compiling code, enhancing picture quality, etc. While gaming is the main reason why you'll want to purchase this laptop for yourself. This level of performance is insane for a laptop in this budget. Come on, these numbers are close to the results of some 2000 plus box laptops I've tested in the past. This is crazy. And from my perspective, it only makes sense to overpay for A5X1 if A. You like to play heavy games like Cyberpunk 2077, Call of Duty Warzone, Red Dead Redemption 2, Control, and so on. B. You're willing to play on the max out settings with RTX on in every game. And C. You are really into live streaming games or planning to get into it. If these three ifs are not about you, then just go hit that link in the description box down below and order A5K1 with RTX 3060 because being 300 bucks cheaper, it will 100% satisfy all your needs. And if you feel that at least one of the arguments is right about you, it's really worth it to overpay and then I do recommend you getting an RTX 3070 gaming laptop with no hesitation at all. Talking about other features that Gigabyte's A5X1 packs, it has a nice keyboard with an RGB backlighting, Wi-Fi 6 support, a ton of storage, decent speakers, pretty solid build quality, really it feels sturdy, and the selection of ports is great as well as their location. I like when companies put rarely reached ports to the back of the machine, it makes the final setup with an external monitor, a mouse, maybe a keyboard and a microphone much, much cleaner. Also, if you haven't watched my previous video, you should know that a 140 watts TGP graphics card is very hard to keep cool, so you're gonna have to use a cooling pad or tweak the GPU settings just a little bit to get rid of those extra 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. I'll leave a link to a video tutorial on how to do that in the description box down below, feel free to check it out. And talking about other cons, I'll be brief. I don't like its design, the battery life is short, I'm talking 3 hours in a mixed usage and just over 1 hour gaming only. And yeah, that's it. The list of disadvantages is very short, especially as for a laptop with such a powerful hardware and for this low price tag. And it's actually very rare to see. This machine is truly unique and it has no competitors in this price range. It smashes every other laptop in its budget in terms of performance and feature set with an elbow in the face. It's suitable for anything and is the coolest part about it. A couple of years ago it would have been impossible to get a laptop of this level for 1300 bucks and it kind of blows my mind. I'm curious how the laptop market will look like in 2 years or even a year. 
Anyways, let me know what laptop would you pick in a $1300 budget and why. Also, don't forget to check out the description box, there is a lot of useful stuff in there, as well as links to both laptops we've talked about in this video. If I helped you somehow, I'd really appreciate it if you purchased a laptop using my link, as it gets me a small commission at no additional cost to you. Thank you for sticking till the end and see you in the next video.